Welcome. Welcome. So in the previous episode, we implemented a new instruction set and everything is working currently. And there was a couple of things that were left unchanged. And as a result, we had to kind of hack it to get it working again. I'd like to implement those features properly in this episode. So one of those features is conditional skipping. And we've got a condition code that's being outputted now. And that condition code goes directly from the decoder into the execute unit, but currently it does nothing. So I would like to implement this. And I think it's gonna be pretty straightforward. So the way to do it is to send the condition directly into here, and then we would have all of the different condition codes lined out. So one of the things we need to do is make sure that we're doing signed operation, and we'd have another comparator for unsigned. So this one will be signed. So in the final processor, what will actually happen is there'll be a subtract, and the subtract will produce a few different flags. So it'll produce a overflow flag, a negative flag, and a carry flag. And that's what will be matched in this logic down here in order to determine what the outcome will be. And I've picked the operations here to be the minimum kind of required set of operations. So there's only a less than and a greater than or equal because in the unsigned case, it's just checking whether the carry bit is set or cleared. In the signed case, it's just checking if the overflow and negative flag are equal to each other or not equal to each other. So those are those flags. And then for equals and not equals, probably what I do is just run them through the XOR and check if the result is zero or not zero in that case. You could also check if the subtraction is zero or not zero as well. I'm not sure which one will be more efficient, but these are all optimizations. So what I'm gonna do right now is just the simplest thing that could possibly work and we can optimize it later. So that's why there's a lot more logic than maybe is necessary, but I feel like it's more readable this way. So, and also low here is just less than, but unsigned. So think of low as lower than, and HS here is higher or same, and that's the, the unsigned version of greater than or equal. And of course we need a comparator that's unsigned as well, so. Mm. Whoops. Oh. So here we have equal, which they're not. Not equal, which is true. Less than. Uh, that might be backwards. Left should be A, not B. Okay, that's backwards. All right. So 
So one is not less than zero. It is greater than or equal. It's not lower than, but it is higher or same. Okay, I think this is working. Now there's two unused condition codes. The zero I'm gonna reserve for don't skip. So then that'll simplify some things. And then the upper bit, I'm not sure what to do with that. Maybe overflow or something like that could be a condition that'll cause a skip. I'm not sure. It could also be always, but then why would you use an instruction that's always skipping? I can't imagine a reason to do that. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave that unimplemented. And again, once we have subtraction and we have proper flags in here, we can simplify this greatly and it'll just become a mux selecting which flags are currently being looked at. But I consider that an optimization. Right now, this is very readable. So we won't optimize until later. Okay, so how do we implement this? What do we do with it? Well, I'm gonna rename this to skip n. And the n is gonna be next. So in the next cycle, we want to skip. In here, in the next cycle, we want to skip. And this is going to be the skip register. And t is going to be skip. Now, I'm not sure what to do with the halt logic, so I'm going to leave it as is for now. And actually, I want to move this up here. So if we're going to skip, then I want to disable writing. So then the skipped instruction will just not do anything. But we want fetch to still happen because we want to skip over that instruction. And there's two different ways that I could implement skip. I could make skip insert a knob in the fetch unit, that's perfectly viable, but there's cases where depending on the kind of instruction, it'll need to skip potentially more than one instruction. It could maybe skip two or more instructions, depending on the type, because we'll have an immediate prefix and we wanna skip both the prefix and the following instruction. So in order to do that, we need to decode the instruction to know whether that instruction would allow the skip bit to stay the same for the next cycle in order to skip the instruction after it. So we have to decode it. We can't just insert an op. So the other way to do it is just to make sure that the skipped instruction is completely inert. It doesn't do anything. And that is quite doable by just disabling writes for the skipped instruction. So what to do about the rest of these? Um, we could temporarily add an error instruction. Yeah, let's just do that. All right, this is working. And of course, our test cases will not pass. Um, I'm kind of thinking I should update these off camera. So I will do that in a bit.
So in here, we've got some differences. So in here, we need to update the CPU def for the new conditional skips. Okay, I think that's correct, but we can implement the other combinations off camera. All right, so clearly this doesn't work yet. We can add in the instruction in the decoder for that. I feel like in the latest version of digital, it got a lot more fiddly to try and actually click on things and change them. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'll just pull this out to separate them so that it's easier. Well, that's problematic. It doesn't like the ASCII dot. Hmm. Well, I guess we can just leave it as a space. Okay, that's working. So if you think about it, if the if instruction is skipping the next one, we actually want it to be the opposite, right? So if it's an if 
eek instruction, we want it to skip the next one if it's not equal, if it's the opposite. Likewise, if it's a skip less than, we want to skip the next one if it's greater than or equal. So I had these all backwards, and I think that's why it's not working. Let's see if that's the case. So if eek, this should cause a skip, and it does. So this jump shouldn't happen. The program counter should stay the same, but it does happen. Hmm. I think I know why. So what I actually want to do is have fetch and enable separate. So if enable is high, then it'll write to the program counter on a jump. But if enable is not high, then the program counter will not change on a jump. So I think it makes sense to have these signals separate here. So then now we've got an enable signal here. And we've got our enable here. All right, now hopefully that will make it work. So it's skipping and it worked, but there's a knot being inserted. Interesting. Hmm. I think that's the correct logic. So jump should do nothing. And now we jump to three. So that should do something. And that does. So now it should count up to 14 here and then reset back to zero. And it does. Awesome. Okay. That works. So now we're calculating only the first 14 Fibonacci numbers. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, I think this does it for this episode. Off camera, I'm gonna fix all of the test cases and change the CPU def to have all of the implemented skip instructions. But this is skip and it was fairly straightforward. In fact, there's very little that needs to be done in the um, in the control logic here. It's just mainly keeping track of whether we're going to skip the next instruction or not. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.